Have you ever felt frustrated by trying to get your blood test done by your doctor? Well, that was us too. Especially when I was bedridden and couldn't get to a clinic. Then we discovered how easy it is to do blood tests at home and it changed everything. In this video, I'm going to share with you our step-by-step -step process and the tips that we've learned of how you can take control of your health from the comfort of your own home. It's easier than you think. Mum will talk you through it and I'll pop back later for a fun fact. In this video, I'm going to share our step-by-step -step process, the tips we've learned and how you can take control of your health when Elliot was bedridden, our doctors were always pretty helpful when things went awry and they would send a district nurse to perform blood tests to check what was happening. But still it seemed that the doctor would never request all the tests that I wanted to check and it would leave me wishing that there was an easy way that I could do it myself without needing a nurse to come and perform the blood draw. And I can see from examining hundreds of people's blood tests that this is the case for most of us in the UK. It really does seem especially challenging to obtain a comprehensive thyroid panel from any doctor. So when I discovered that we can actually arrange to do a blood test at home and we can have easy access to those results, it was amazing. It's just been so helpful. And so this video, we're going to show you how you can do a home blood test. Now, I'm really not the most coordinated person and I'm sure you'll be able to do a much more efficient job. It is easier if you can have somebody help you, but it is possible to do it on your own. And the company that we found to be the best and the cheapest for all our blood tests is monitormyhealth.org. So it's a not-for-profit NHS fundraising organisation and it's run by an NHS lab, which is based in Exeter Hospital. And it analyzes the blood test for all our local GPs and hospitals in the area. So basically it's the same test that you'd get from the doctor. It's really easy to set up an account on their website, but you do need to use a different email address for each different person that you set up because the individual's results are linked to that email login. Now there are other companies that offer additional tests but we found that the Monitor My Health ones are by far the most affordable and the easiest to perform at home. And they offer quite a variety of tests that you can choose from. So if your doctor has already done some blood tests recently for you, but you find that there's just a few gaps, you can just pick the tests that fill in the gaps. But generally, we tend to do the full health screen. And if it's the first time that you're doing it, I would really recommend that you get the full screen that's got the TPO antibodies just so that you can have as much information as possible. This is the test kit that they send you. And the first thing that you'll notice is a big label that advises you to do the test between Monday and Thursday, because that'll avoid you having your blood test sitting in the post box getting old over the weekend. So you really want this to be sent off when it's the freshest. So tip number one, do it before breakfast. Do it early in the day, early in the week, Monday to Thursday only. It doesn't say it anywhere that I've noticed on their website or in the paperwork, but if you are having your thyroid labs checked, which I hope you are, then it's good practice to take your blood test before you eat breakfast first thing in the morning because your levels will fluctuate during the day. And if you always take the test at the same time of day, then you're gonna be able to compare those tests in the future. So tip two, do not be in a rush. It is absolutely essential not to be in a rush when you're doing this. So allow yourself a good half an hour or so to take the blood and then make sure that you can catch the post with your sample that same day. So it comes with a prepaid tracked 24 postage. So I like to take it to the post office to get proof of posting, but in the directions, it just says pop it into the post box. Tip number three, have a big drink or even two before you take the test. Now, something that we've noticed is that different family members have runnier blood than others, and this is definitely related to their hydration levels. So Elliot usually drinks a lot of water during the day, so he is generally easy to get blood out of, but not always. Even so, the directions suggest that you drink a glass of water 
10 to 15 minutes before you take the test. I'd make it as big a glass of water as possible because it really does get frustrating when you're trying to milk your finger of blood and nothing is coming out. And if you try and squeeze out the blood, it just crushes the blood cells and they become unusable. And so you'll need to do the test again. So just have a great big drink and it will work much better. Keep warm. So be in a comfy, warm location and that will encourage your blood vessels to be nice and wide. Tip number five. Next, you need to prepare the kit. I always make sure I've got a load of kitchen paper on the floor under where you're collecting in case the blood drips onto the floor. The yellow tube needs more blood if you do have two tubes. So the first one you fill up is the yellow one. So if you get that yellow tube ready with the lid off, now there's a little storage hole in the box and pop the tube into the hole. Also take the top of the purple tube and then you'll be all ready for action, but keep the lids separately and don't get them muddled up because I have done that in the past. The tubes are color coded the same as the lids. So it's pretty easy really. And also get all the lancets and the wipes all ready to use so that everything's ready for you and you're not gonna get your house looking like a crime scene with blood smears on everything if you need to start rummaging around in packets. Tip six, now that we're all ready and prepared, you just need to soak your hand in a bowl of warm water for a few minutes, just to warm up the hand that you're gonna be collecting the blood from, and then dry it really thoroughly, but don't use any soap on it. Tip number seven, if you clean your finger that you're planning to use with the alcohol wipes, and let it air dry thoroughly, we generally find that the ring finger works really well and just occasionally it runs dry before we're finished. It's probably a good idea to prepare two fingers in case you do need a backup. And don't use your little finger. Tip eight, now everything's ready. It's recommended that if you can stand up while you take the blood, it may help with the blood flow, but we managed it okay when Elliot was blood ridden, just using his arm hanging down below his heart. So the next thing to do is to fill the tubes. You prepare your lancet by popping off the top and then when you're ready, you press it into the nice padded bit of your finger and you'll hear a little click and feel just a little prickle and then hopefully your finger will start bleeding. And then you just collect the drops of blood as they form into the yellow tube until it gets right to the top where the line 600 mark is. It says you can gently massage down the side of your hand to try to encourage the blood flow, but really don't try to wring the blood out or the cells will get crushed and the sample won't be able to be used. If that happens, they will send you another tube for you to try again, but hopefully you won't need it. If you do need to continue with a new finger, you just stab it again with another lancet, they give you three, and then you carry on filling the tubes. And when it's full, you carefully but firmly pop the lid back on the yellow tube. Please ensure that you do hear the click to confirm that the lid is closed correctly. Now we did have an instance once when I was pushing down on the lid and the tube and the lid pinged off across the kitchen and it spread the blood everywhere. So hold it firmly. And then if you have the purple tube, just carry on filling that one until you've passed the 250 line. Tip 10. It's important to mix the purple tube for 30 seconds. When you've put the lid back on, it's essential to mix this purple tube for 30 seconds. You just twist it and roll it around gently to make sure it's mixed thoroughly. And then it's just the case of clearing up the mess. So you can stop the bleeding, just use a bit of pressure from the cleansing wipe, and then you can put a plaster on it, which is supplied as well. Then you have your little bag. So you need to fill in the date and the time of collection on the plastic bag. So you pop the tubes into the plastic bag where it says open here, and then you seal it by taking off this silver strip. And there's a compliment slip that came in the packet that you need to fill in. You put the plastic bag that's got the tubes in it and the compliment slip inside your cardboard envelope. 
and ensure that it's pasted the same day. Now the lab is really good and it will test your blood as soon as they get it. And they'll usually email you with the results within just a couple of days to let you know that your results are ready. So to see your results, you just literally log back into the Monitor My Health website with your email address and then you can have a look. But the important thing to remember here is Tip 11, don't rely on the normal ranges that the lab provides because the ranges that the labs will give you are not based on optimal levels for your health or based on science. They're set by the lab and they're based on the average readings of all the people that are taking the test, which let's face it, are probably not going to be people that are in the best of health. And I look forward to sharing more with you in our next video where we're gonna receive the test results and we're gonna compare them with the blood ranges that are based on optimal levels for good health rather than the ranges that the lab are gonna give you. Because we're gonna explore what we can do to improve our results if we do discover that our test results aren't quite as normal as our doctor likes to tell us they are. So please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when that one comes out because that one will be invaluable to you. So here's Elliot with his fun fact. Welcome back to my curiosity corner. We all know the phrase, I'll be there in a jiffy, meaning a short time. But did you know that for a physicist, a jiffy has a very specific meaning? It is the time it takes for light to travel a single centimeter. That's about 33 trillionths of a second. But here's where my curiosity kicked in. While I was doing my research for the segment, I started digging around to find where this original fact came from. It's a famous piece of trivia that's always attributed to a brilliant scientist named Gilbert Newton Lewis, all the way back in 1926. It seemed like a solid fact that he came up with this definition. But finding that original source has actually proven to be incredibly elusive. The fact appears everywhere, but the original citation is surprisingly hard to pin down. So what's the real story? The truth is, I don't know. It's possible that Lewis invented this definition, or it could be entirely made up. It highlights to me the fact that you should always be careful with what you read on the internet. Just because lots of people repeat something doesn't mean it's right. I look forward to seeing you again on another Curiosity Corner. Bye.